Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. It's a beautiful morning, so let's put it to good use. A really big branch fell down last night out of the storm damaged birch tree from last December. Glad I wasn't standing here when it decided to go. Glad that it missed the RD6 too. I'm giving you all fair warning right now. I don't think I could ever paint over this. I'm weird, you know that by now. I just like that too much. Well, I get a lot of questions about the Narrow RD6 and when I think I might be um, turning that into a project, I would love to be working on it right now. And honestly, if X231 wasn't still in the shop, this would be a lot closer. I uh, really need to get X231 done first. But the RD6, if everything goes according to plan, should be coming up sooner rather than later. It's definitely a tractor that I want to get into. At the very least, get into number one where the bent connecting rod is, get that stuff out, see what we're up against, and then we can go from there. But I think this would just be the perfect plow pulling tractor. I would love to get this out in the field, shine up some bottoms. So today we're just gonna do a little bit of kind of fall maintenance to it, if you will. They have beat that seat back up. I think they've bent it forward and bent it backwards so many times. Patent tag is still in place though. But yeah, I come out here and um, do a little bit of uh, lubricating to this from time to time. We're gonna do that again today. And um, yep, we were down in the start position already with the compression release where we wanted to be. And because I'm still on somewhat of a work restriction with the eye recovery, we can accomplish a few minor tasks on this tractor today and uh, maybe tell some stories in the meantime, scrape some grease, hopefully have a good time. And I'll be revisiting the rock crusher here probably after this and a few other kind of low key activities for the foreseeable future in the feed. So you all know what to expect. Nice and clean, sort of. Having a look down the pre-combustion chambers, I pulled the injectors out of this a long time ago because I like to pour oil into the cylinders from time to time and then manually bar the engine over. Just keeps everything lubricated. Just be careful not to spill. We don't want to make a mess of the paint. <laughs> Let's see if my awesome depth perception works out. Oh yeah, we're not doing too bad. And number three. Making a little bit of mess here. That's all right, rust control. This is the wrench for barring these engines over manually, 3B401, and it just has a slot in the end for the cross pin that sticks out here. Normally there's a little housing right here, kind of like you see on the um, starting engine uh, shaft. That's just been taken off, but there's usually a little door on that. 
see that depth perception. Takes a couple tries to, uh, to hit the mark, but with the compression release thrown, it should be pretty easy to bar it over, but we're hitting where that uh, connecting rod is bent. And once, there we go, we got it past the point of resistance. That rod is so bent that it actually hits the side of the cylinder. So that's your only point of resistance on the whole engine. Otherwise, we're just circulating oil. Yes, I have the fan that's supposed to be on the end of that small hub you see rotating. That's another piece I took off this tractor years ago because the woven web center was basically out of it. Okay, so we, if we trace it back, may have had a little bit too much in number three. That's all right. Now we put all the plugs back. Throw these back on for safekeeping as well. I pulled the spark plugs out of the starting engine and I dumped oil in each cylinder as well. I use a little bit more here because this is a flathead design so all the valves are up here and you want to get plenty in so it runs back, actually gets on top of the piston a little bit. And we don't have the crank rod in place here but I can use this socket extension, grabs onto the claw just fine. And that does it for the starting engine as well. So we know all of our cylinders have a good coating of oil. And around to the other side of the tractor now, there's a few things I want to address over here too. Um, we'll look at this uh, air cleaner cup to begin with. Last time we towed this around with the D2, I noticed that neither one of the stay bolts are holding the cup on. So, I think I ought to remedy that. It looks like it's dropped a little bit right here. We'll see what it's gonna to take to get that off of there and see what we find inside. I saw a little bit of dust fly out. Does that mean it's dry? It doesn't feel like there's much in it. Okay, we're hitting something down below. Yeah, the fuel line. I don't think that would have fallen off if it had wanted to. And boy, it's getting windy out here all of a sudden. Yeah, it's hitting that lever. Okay. solves that little problem. Surprisingly, the original shutoff lever was still on that fuel valve down there. Those are usually always gone. Let's see if that gave us just enough room. Yep. And it's dry. <laughs> we would not have made a mess if it would have fallen off. It's a little bit greasy up in there, but um, I think we're just going to leave it. Well, I should knock some of that rust out of there even if it's just to get some fresh oil in to keep the bottom from rotting completely away rotting through getting pinholes yeah I'll clean it out probably even dump some used oil in there better than nothing that's better like I said some used oil I threw some black stuff in there but it's better than nothing doesn't need to be cleaned for this because it's not gonna run on it anyway so as long as we've got that kind of full, let's uh, 
There we go. I want to hide it under the fender best I can. We'll cover it up with one of these boards too. At least it'll keep some tree leaves and whatever from flying in there. So another problem I found the other day, the throttle lever has, it seems like it moves a lot, but you look at the bottom and the rod, that has stuck. So that rod goes under the fuel tank and it comes up here and it feeds that bell crank and then there is a plunger in here and that plunger's not moving. So I don't think it's related, but this would be a good excuse to take this side cover off of the injection pump and just start having a look around, make sure anything's not like horribly stuck in there. Okay, so it doesn't look super horrible in there. It's not a complete rust ball anyway. First thing I wanna do is make sure all three of these injection pump plungers are moving up and down. So I'll stage you all here with the camera. I'll manually bar the engine over. Let me know if they move. Now I want to take a quick minute to explain to you all what these three square drives are that stick out of the side of the injection pump. That's a feature on all of the early Caterpillar cinder block style pumps like this. There's one for each pump. So if this would have been an RD7, there'd have been four. If it would have been an RD8, there'd have been six. This is the three banger, so there's just three. But you notice this little V mark on here right now, and it happens to be pointed down. There's also a detent on that drive that corresponds with that V mark. So we can pull it out of it, it'll click a little bit, right there. And we return it to the down position, you hear it kind of click into place. That keeps everything neutralized out for the running position. Now, the reason for these, they originally had um, like a, a closed um, end wrench that came with the original tool kit that fit right over these. This 916 will do for now. But on the end of this drive, you go in here, there's a cam finger that sticks out. And when you roll this drive around off the detent position, that cam finger is gonna come up and it's gonna hit this um, tab that's on the bottom side of the pump lifter. You can see number two and number three have been broken away. Number one is still intact. And you can manually prime the diesel fuel system with this square drive. As that cam finger comes up, it pushes on that tab on that lifter. And you can see by rotating the square drive, you can actuate that fuel pump plunger up and down, and that's what is pushing fuel out through this line. Why they deleted this option on, or this feature on the newer um, forged body fuel pumps, the more compact units, I don't know, because to me this is just an excellent idea. It just gives you another option for um, working on your fuel system. And when you're done with the priming, you notice that, um, that V mark on there, just turn it so it points down again. You hear that click? It engages the detent, keeps that cam finger down out of the way, and you're ready to run. So next time you see um, this era, this vintage of Caterpillar tractor that has these square drives coming out of the side of the pump, you'll know exactly what they're for. And they've also got a diagram on the, uh, the brass instruction tag that's on the pump side cover as well. So really neat stuff, I think. So next we want to take a look at the shutoff rod, which goes through up here. You can just barely see it. That's connected to this external lever right here. The rod comes back and hooks onto the main fuel off and then fuel on lever. And as I move this lever, you can watch that rod. See it working away. I just want to make sure that shaft in there, that plunger rod in there, moves according to this lever. So I'll have you all watch me one more time. Let me know what happens. It's moving, you say? All right, good enough. 
So now that we know we don't have any plunger or shutoff issues, we can do some prying out here without having to worry about anything in here. And usually these stick where this rod goes into this uh, housing right here. That stuff gets dry. This is like an old leather uh, shield, which they're almost always deteriorated. Um, usually if you can get in this bell crank and there we go, start to twist those, it'll rotate a little bit. That goes a long way toward freeing it up. Another thing you can do is get in here, make sure, like we don't have to worry about this, uh, this catch right here. The spring's all cobbled on this one. So that lever just free floats. So you'd have to disengage that uh, ratchet back there before you do this, but you can also just pry on that. Yeah, see, we can get a little bit of movement if we pry it just right. And after working that a bit out there, There we are. We've got it moving again now. The more we work it, the easier it moves. Good. And finally, we'll coat it up with our favorite flavor of thick stuff. I'm not worried about any kind of cross-contamination in here. This is all going to come apart before it runs anyway. Get some under that sleeve there. All right. That thing was really nice now. The air cleaner cup can go back on now that we're not working in this area anymore. And here I put that bolt up out of my way and now it's in my way. <laughs> and we seal the injection pump back up too. I like to have a look in the final drives from time to time. I've never been able to see the whole bowl gear at once, but after I've drugged this around, I do like to uh, pull the plugs back out. I can assess oil condition and I can even look in and see some of the gear teeth. And these have always looked, see you can see gear teeth right there. They've always looked pretty good inside. I've never seen rust. I've never found a chipped tooth and Oil level could be topped up a little bit here, so I think I'm going to uh, find some old 8090 dump in there. Pretty bright over here. Let's see if we can get a view. Yes, I can see gear teeth in here as well. Oil level about the same. I'll throw, I think I've got some 8090 around. I'll throw some in there. Top those up a little bit. Drink up. This is the good stuff. I don't fill these too full because in case the sprocket seals are bad, it'll just weep out if I get it that high. But back in here with the light. Yeah, that's good. That's at a good level right there. Back around once again. This tractor takes the cake for being the greasiest machine I have ever owned. And I've scraped quite a bit up here. You can see the brighter yellow. That was protected under the grease. Um, the stuff that's faded out, it's close to white down here. That's the same coat of paint. That didn't have the grease on it down there to protect it. So it was probably a rather cheap uh, yellow paint that they did the final spray on this with back in the day, but just all that grease up there protected it enough that it didn't fade. But yeah, you can definitely tra trace this tractor's lineage. We have some original yellow, and then we have that uh, Civilian Conservation Corps forest green, and then we have orange, which would have been township slash municipality. 
and then one final coat of yellow over the top. And I've touched on this before, but one of my favorite accents, all the old Civilian Conservation Corps numbers. I'm assuming that's what they are down each side of the hood, but um, I come out here and just scrape every so often. You can see we're finding some fresh, not fresh, but some prior covered yellow on top of the injection pump right there. And another interesting fact, this stick that's wedged in down here behind the fuel pump, I've never been able to pull that out. And I have pulled on that thing pretty hard a couple times. I think it's gonna require some disassembly to get that out. Um, this used to have, when I got it, and I still have it, I took it off, the full belly pan and the huge front tow hook, all cat factory options. And um, I'll pop a link up at the end of this episode where you could go back to one of the early, early, earliest videos I've ever, that I ever made. And you can see a walk around I did on this then that it still had all the plant choke blade brackets and cylinders and all the super heavy stuff on. Belly pan was on at that time as well. But yeah, the backstory on this tractor, I got it from my friend Matt. Um, he lived in uh, Cumberland, Wisconsin and had a farm, small farm. It was called the Sprague Farm. I don't think he's the one that named it. But I think he just carried on with it. And he was a Caterpillar enthusiast, much like me. Had an RD4, this RD6. Um, he had a D7, 3T, I believe. And they did a little bit of farming with these, just, you know, whenever it was convenient, just for nostalgia. These weren't their primary tractors, but he farmed a little bit with this one. And uh, he um, unfortunately passed away at 47 years old. And that was about 10 years ago now. I ended up getting this uh, RD6 from him and he was pretty happy that that I picked it up. He was afraid that it was uh, gonna go to scrap. And there's probably better RD6s out there, but I don't know, it's one of those things. I think them from time to time, come out here and scrape some grease. He was a pretty talented machinist. He did a lot of stuff. This little aluminum cap I brought out. Um, this is uh, something that he made I picked up about half a dozen of these when I bought some stuff from him toward the end there when he was sick, about the time I picked up the RD6. And uh, he CNC'd all this out of aluminum. You can see all the little uh, serrations that went around in there. This had been on a tank at one time. That's why it's kind of rusty inside on the threads. But yeah, he made a bunch of these. So I bought some from him, brought them home. I've used them from time to time. But one of these days, I'll get around to this tractor. It's just one of those deals where there's always been something more pressing to do. Work on a machine that I actually had to use for something or keep running or get into a farm all H for a quick restoration and then that turns into a year plus long endeavor. Hopefully that's all the longer it takes me to finish that one, but we've always had X231 in the mix and I really want to start on this one soon. In the meantime, we'll just scrape some grease. Just enjoy the day. There, we're covered up once again. The day is drawing to a close. As you can see, the sun's getting low. And that concludes the day of general maintenance on the narrow RD6 and I will admit I had a lot of fun today. Hope you all did too. Um, hopefully by this time next year also we've got the new machine storage shed put up and this tractor by this point in the season is under a roof ready for a long winter or maybe we'll be working on it before then. I don't know it is on the short list for sure. Thank you for watching everyone. And as I said before, I'll pop a link up to that early walk around episode of this tractor. Y'all that haven't been with the channel forever can see what this looked like right after I brought it home. And if you're on a device that does not do the little pop-up windows, there'll also be a link down in the description below. Thank you again, everyone. I did have fun today and I hope to see y'all back.